The Breakfast Club every Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Say something is the name of that song, and yes, we're going to say a lot of things today. And it is that time of the day once again, 20th of March, 2021. It is a Saturday, and another edition of the Breakfast Club with a very special guest in the studio. And excited to have her in the studio as well. And if you have a question, of course. Um, you can definitely let us know. Zero double seven three 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 six three three six is the number to WhatsApp. And uh, this is Jay on the Breakfast Club on EFM to Mega Weekends. Before we start our chat, let me quickly talk to you about Oral Health Day, which is today. And it is estimated that oral diseases affect nearly three point five billion people worldwide. And remember, oral cancer is one of the most three, actually one of the three most common cancers in some countries of Asia and the Pacific. One in four adults aged between twenty to sixty four currently have cancer. Cavities and in Sri Lanka, more than 69% of Sri Lankans have active, untreated cavities, and only 30% of Sri Lankans have visited a dentist within a year. So your oral health reminder is from Sensodyne, and if you get a sudden sharp sensation whenever you consume something hot or cold, well, dentists recommend Sensodyne twice a day because Sensodyne goes right inside the tooth and soothes the nerve, giving relief from sensitivity. And if you have a question, you can post it on Facebook. Uh, if you have a question regarding uh, dental healthcare well then you can definitely put post a question on Facebook but you need to use the hashtag hashtag ask a dentist SL ask dentist SL that's the hashtag and you can use it and ask any dental related uh, questions oral health days today and with that let's give a big huge EFM welcome to Mrs. Ramzina Morset Lai who is with me in the studio right now she's the chief marketing officer of uh, Hutchison Telecommunications Lanka Private Limited. Superb, excellent, great to have her in the studio, a bubbly character, fun character. So we're going to have fun in the studio today and we're going to have a great conversation. With that, let's welcome uh, Mrs. Ramzina Morset Lai. Ramzina, hi, good morning. Hi, hi, Jay. Oh, so sorry, I forgot to put on the mic. Hi, Ramzina. Hi, Jay. See, my first mistake, <laughs> forgot to turn on a mic. Okay, uh, Ramzina, uh, we have a limited time, so once again, great to have you in the studio. And uh, we'll get right down to business. You are Chief Marketing Officer for Hutchison Telecommunications, Lanka Private Limited. I'm sure this is a tough role, but could you t tell us a little bit about your role, please? Yeah, first let me just say who Hutchison Hatch is. Hatch is um, um Part, uh, part of the Chiyu Chungkong Hutchison Group, which is based out in, out in Hong Kong. Yeah. We run telecom operations in 12 countries across uh, the world, uh, specifically in Europe. So Hutch has uh, uh, been in Sri Lanka for nearly 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I have been at Hutch for now eight years. <coughs> I joined as head of sales and marketing, so I still, I mean, even though my designation has changed, so I still uh, head uh, two departments, uh, the sales mm -hmm. function as well as the marketing function, so I overlook about, uh, teams, about 200 people. Oh, wow. Okay. And in this variety of people, uh, over 200 people, you know, you need to manage and, you know, help them out, etc. And I'm sure they have questions and concerns, sometimes even complaints. You have to listen to all of that. Um, is that tiring for you sometimes? Or uh, you... No, no, not really. I really like working with people. Yeah. I'm really a people's uh, person. Um, so uh, in yeah, at my position, it's a really senior role. So there is a lot of mentoring, guiding, you know, it's mm. that kind of role. So I have to make sure that I put the right person to do the right job. There are lots of work that, that's happening that needs to happen mm. that's going on because we are a challenger brand and, you know, we have a vision for this brand. So there is a whole lot of people behind this brand. So in my, my one of my key uh, job role, uh, job task is to make sure that I uh, find the right person to do the right job. Otherwise, you know, if I put a mismatch or if I put people, uh, I need to make sure that, you know, in the, within the team that the strengths and weaknesses match and that they complement each other. Yeah. So that's how the job gets done. Yeah, that's uh, that's an excellent approach. But in a team of 200, how do you figure out, okay, this one is the perfect one for this role and this one is the perfect one for this role? Yeah, so when you, yeah. Do you have you sit down and chat with them? How do you identify? Yeah, that is also part of the job. But, you know, when you work with people close Closely, you identify, you know, this person will be good at this job, this person is going to be good at the other job. So, you know, you also sometimes find in the team, you need to find people whose strengths will complement each other, not really clash. So, right. you need to find that real, you know, that fit. Okay. 
So the personalities kind of need to match yes, also, and you're like, okay. Personalities, skills, experience, yeah. expertise, all that needs to match. All right. And if there's, I mean, I'm sure it happens often or it doesn't happen at all because uh, clearly you have an interesting management approach as well. Uh, let's say that two people have an argument, let's say, for example, you know, two, two members in the team or three members in the team uh, have an argument and they come to you and complain or whatnot. How would you defuse the situation or how would you tackle it? Well, I think uh, it depends where the argument is. If it is amongst a large crowd, then of course I will have to defuse it immediately and, you know, kind of make sure, you know, some diplomacy and a sense of uh, uh, decency is brought in because yeah. we don't want big arguments yeah, that are yeah. counterproductive to the teamwork, right? So then, of course, I will have to get them together separately and have a chat with them and make sure that, you know, both are aligned to the objectives of the organization and the team because yeah. we are all going in one direction, we are all going towards one vision. So we can't be having fights and wars inside the team when yeah. the enemy is out there. So then exactly. the team, team has to understand that. Yeah, yeah. And what is your marketing, oh sorry, what is your management approach? Uh, what is the number one rule when it comes to you, when you are thinking, okay, I'm handling this team. This is my approach when it comes to managing my team. Yeah, I would think I am uh, one of uh, what you call um, collaborator, okay. um, mentor kind of role. I don't really. Um, uh, so you're not a person that do this, do no, that. No, 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 that doesn't really work in today's today's situation. Yeah. Today's young people are very different. You know, they come with different skill set. They come with different expectations. They mm -hmm. also are not the kind of people who are going to stay in one organization for too long. So their career objectives are different and we should be able to actually have a succession plan or we should be able to actually give them something that they can value even if they are going to stay with us for only a couple of years. Uh, the experience that they get from us needs to be, you know, worthwhile. Be worthwhile for them. Yeah. Uh, which you is, can't really manage people by, you know, shouting, screaming at them. Which is uh, excellent. I think that's great because I have worked at uh, <laughs> my, my previous place was like that. Do this, do that, and you know, <laughs> you can leave if you want, and all of that nonsense. So uh, clearly, you won't actually get the best out of the people if that is the case. Yes, that I was just going to say that, and uh, uh, because they they undervalue, they undervalued people. They really um, they didn't care. The, the, the main thing is you are replaceable. You can go if you want, and it doesn't inspire confidence or motivation. That's one thing. <laughs> so clearly, Ramzina knows what she's talking about, and I think we can learn a bit uh, here. And uh, so, yeah, the generation that you know grew up in the 90s and 80s is different, but now the generation that's that grew up in the 2000s and the 2010s, they're a little different. So, uh, how as a as a leader, you are you know like you said, you are looking at different ways of approaching people and all and it's so it's so refreshing to hear that because usually it's the same as uh, most companies i wouldn't say every company but some companies are there that use that approach of you know i'm the boss i tell you what to do and go and do it and etc but uh, do you feel like uh, that that is changing now in the current See, environment sometimes uh, especially at, at times of crisis you have to listen to the boss there can't be too many bosses mm. if, it's, if it's a crisis if, if there is one person the boss says i'm the boss you do as i tell you because i know what's best for the team then you align yourself to that mm. and you do what is what you're asked to do yeah but in an ongoing basis you cannot you know have a team work like that because team individual people have different opinions different uh, ex different thoughts that they feel you know a job can be done in mm. different ways so you need to respect each of them because yeah. if the team members feel they, they are not respected they aren't going to stay yeah exactly and uh, i'm sure with your team big team they people might have ideas thoughts and so when somebody approaches you with an idea maybe uh, a new concept or whatnot um, I'm sure with your management style, you'll probably listen. You'll sit and. Yes, yes, always, always. You have to always have an open door policy issue. People should find you approachable so that they can come and talk to you about uh, new ideas, um, new processes of doing things, how to even cut costs, or even their personal problems. You know, if they feel that they have a boss that will, who will listen to them, who will um, you know guide them, you know, yeah. uh, and uh, who will value their thoughts, then they will come and talk to you. Very true because the new generation they they grew up with technology so they probably have shorter ways to get things done or they're they are very tech savvy also so they might have ideas but if you shut those ideas down they probably might feel a little demotivated and be like I'm not empowered or they I just gave a good idea and I was told to get out of the office so uh, so yeah which is which is very important how important it is how important is it to inspire the next generation in your opinion? See, um, unlike us, 
I, I, I wouldn't say unlike us, unlike me. Now there are so many opportunities out there, so many career options. When we, when I was a child, okay, there was like five, six career options. You either become a doctor, lawyer, accountant, you know. Yeah. Okay. You can count. Stuff. Okay, so now there were no, not really many options. But yeah. now it's not like that. There are so many options, and the world is changing. Technology is really driving industry. So you, unless you are able to inspire, especially the young people, and hold hold them on and make them value the organization and the experience that they can gain out of it, you are not going to keep them. So for an organization, it is important to keep people because otherwise you will be forever training people and you know letting them go. Yeah, and, you know, in a year or two they are leaving. Yes. So it is in, in important to hold on to them. So you for, for, for you to hold on to them, you need to inspire them also. Otherwise, you know, if they are not inspired, if they don't feel like they are part of a bigger thing, mm -hmm. they are not going to stay. So yeah. it's critical. Very, very great indeed. Uh, inspirational words right here and we are off to a great start on The Breakfast Club with Jay on EFM's Mega Weekends. Already 9.15 so we'll take a quick break and come back and continue our chat with Ramzina Morsupli who is the Chief Marketing Officer of uh, Hutchison Telecommunications Lanka Private Limited. Time is 9.15, good morning. Scatman on E883, Scatman John for you on the show. Good morning, we have Johnny on the show saying hi Jay, good morning, have a blessed day. Say hi to Ramzina, I know her and her hubby uh, who was my batchmate after 30 years, nice to have to have been connected. Also you can remind her that uh, I DJed on her 18th birthday in Kalania. Not birthday, I think. <laughs> Maybe your daughter, her daughter's birthday? birthday? Oh, Ramzina's 18th birthday. <laughs> uh, birthday. No, probably not. No, yeah, no, probably no. not. But uh, yeah, so Johnny clearly uh, knows you. But uh, Johnny, could you maybe mention your full name so that might ring a bell to Ramzina or maybe she can tell her hubby also after the show, maybe uh, remind, uh, talk to you or mention your name. So anyway, uh, continuing our chat with uh, Ramzina, uh, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of Hutch. Uh, Hutchison Telecommunications, Lanka Private Limited, and um, right. So uh, we were we finished our chat regarding you know uh, empowering uh, the, the the young team members and etc. And how you how when they feel empowered they will come up with more new ideas and they'll you know maybe be a part of the company. And like you said, the new generation is uh, not like they don't want to stay in one place for five years, eight years, ten years. If it's one or two years, if they're not happy, they leave. And uh, how would uh, how would you change that for them to stick around and be like you know what I'm going to stick around uh, with Ramzina for five years or etc. How would how would that happen? Yeah, I think first is to ensure that their job or whatever the task that they're assigned to do is something that they see value in, mm. that they feel like they're you know they are contributing to the organization. That is one thing because if it's a menial task, they're not going to, they're not going to stay. Yeah. And then also of course to make sure that you know there are so many other things around the job that you feel. So there has to be bonding. There has to be um, say a certain training that is given to them. Uh, so if they need certain specific skills that they need to learn yeah. if their jobs are being enriched sometimes they may not have that specific job skill that is required but we pick a person because if he, he or she has an attitude mm. or the aptitude to do that job so then we'll have to give that extra training you know so there are so many other things that you need to to ensure or even look at you know sponsoring their edu education so that's something that we're discussing with our hr department wow at the time. okay so how people need a specific uh, qualification that they need to acquire to do it to their next level why not the com we, company help out yeah it, yes. so there are stuff like that that that, wow. we, that they're looking at i mean hutch is a good organization to work for it's an equal opportunity employer it's, mm -hmm. a, it's very kind to its to its uh, employees so mm -hmm. Um, we always try to make our, our uh, team members' jobs easier and their lives better. Oh wow, that is truly uh, inspiring and empowering indeed. Uh, Asmin on the show saying hi Jay, good morning and uh, good morning to Mrs. Ramzina as well. Enjoying the show and uh, the chat. Thank you so much Asmin. Saroj saying good morning as well. Good morning to you Saroj. Um, so the other thing is in, in your professional career, was telecommunications something you always uh, something that you always had an eye on or you always wanted to join or was this a beautiful accident? <laughs> Not really. I uh, See, I uh, marketing has been something that I have always wanted to do. I think I have a good right. Because you're a people's person, right? Yes, yes. I, I also have a good right 
right brain, left brain balance. So, you know, so that means I can be creative and impulsive as well as be tactical and um, disciplined at the same time. So, to, to excel in a marketing career, you need to have both of these. Mm. So, I think I have a good left brain, right, right brain balance. So, I'm able to make something good out of this career. So I've worked in several industries. I've been in advertising. I yeah. worked at an organization called Zenith, which was at its peak at that time. Then I moved on to Haley's. Uh, I was Haley's was my client when I was at uh, at Zenith Advertising. So they offered me an opportunity. I moved there. So from Haley's, I moved on to bigger things at uh, Pizza Hut. It's a brand that I loved. I think I really helped bring that brand out. Uh, and made it big in Sri Lanka. I worked there nearly wow. eight years. Nice. And then I got this opportunity at uh, at uh, Hutch. It's a telecommunications company. It's technology driven, but I'm not a technical person at all. I, yeah. I still don't understand some of the stuff that's being discussed when it comes <laughs> to telecom, the networks, yeah. and the IT systems. I'm a people's person. I know that part. <laughs> and marketing, you ask me anything, yeah. okay? No, the thing is, the business KPIs across industries are the same. It yeah. doesn't matter, you know, whether you are into finance or you know exactly. FMCG or you know hospitality or yeah. telecom. Business KPIs are the same. So all our strategies, sales, distribution, marketing, product development, finance strategies revolve around same same business KPIs. How do you how do you grow your business? How do you acquire new customers? How do you how do you protect your existing customer base? How do you grow new customers? And how do you win back the ones you lost? Mm. So you know whatever you do, you do around these things, these three things. So different organization, different companies will have different strategies, but at the end of the day, this is what needs to be done. Right. So it doesn't matter whether you have at my level, I think at a senior level, the technical skills are less required, but what is required more is the soft skills. Yes. And uh, very interesting that you brought this up. How important is soft skills, not only for a marketing person, but in a professional environment in general? How, uh, whether you meet people, whether you meet clients or not, how important is soft skills in your opinion? I think it is extremely important, uh, especially as you move up the ladder, because it means you will be managing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Managing doesn't necessarily mean your own team, but you will be managing clients, you can be managing your people who are above you, your superiors, and then if, if, like me, I'm, I work for a multinational, so I also have to manage people in the head office. Mm. So a lot of relationship management is required at this this level. So when you're at the at the bottom of your ladder, as you start your career, your technical skills are very important, you know, what do you know about the job. Yeah. But as you move up, soft skills, especially people management skills, leadership yeah. skills, language skills, those become extremely important. Wow. So uh, definitely uh, soft skills are also very, very important. Uh, it, it's a given for sure and uh, you just heard from chief marketing officer herself how important it is regardless of which field you are in so we have a question from uh, Vinodini Vinodini is asking does Hatch have branches outside Colombo not dealer offices oh, yes so we don't have branches our own branches outside officer uh, outside Colombo we are actually in the process of setting it up because Hatch is going through a brand transformation so we are sick with a big we revamp the process, yes, yeah. in the process of setting it up. But our deal officers are as good as our branch officers. I mean, it can you can do almost ninety nine percent of the the tasks that a branch office can do. You can get it done at a deal office because they are all empowered, they are facilitated, the systems are available. Mm -hmm. So any customer can walk into a dealer outfit. We have uh, uh, fifty eight dealer shops across the country, main dealer shops. Plus mm -hmm. we also work with Lanka Bell. Uh, you to uh, Lanka Bell has nearly 70 outlets, so you can work with them also. You know, if you need to get anything done, either you get a new connection, or you want to get your old connection back, or you know, you want to get a detailed bill, or you know, whatever whatever customer service related issues you want to resolve, you can go to any one of these shops. So, uh, and, uh, get it done. Get it done yeah. Okay, so Malik D. So Malik is saying. Uh, what qualifications do you need to be in the top of uh, the marketing game? The, 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 you know, the difference, with, and also he's asking the difference between sales and marketing. So first question is, what qualifications do you need to get to be 
in a leadership role in a marketing uh, capacity. So when you say qualification, is, uh, if Malik is asking paper qualifications, I don't think there is a written rule that you know you yeah. have to have a, a particular qualification. It's the experience also. It's a, lot of, yeah, it's a lot to do with the experience and how quickly you can grasp the situation, understand and analyze and of course give direction when it's required mm. because leadership skills are important, right? Uh, at this level, at the senior level. Um, but uh, when I am looking for people uh, to um, to manage my team, I am looking at definitely we are looking at certain uh, qualifications. So MBA currently is like you know um, is like a, a, a degree is a bare minimum, of course. Uh, MBA is MBA is also important, I, but I will definitely not hold that against uh, anybody. Yeah. yeah. But um, what uh, what an education qualification gives is that it kind of structures a thought process. So you have a bit of a direction, yes, I guess. Yes, yeah. yes. But the, in order to grasp and learn and grow further, it's the experience, yes, I guess. That's right. Um, so qualifications, are, but I guess it's this Sri Lankan mentality also, like you know, because parents pressure you get that qualification, get this qualification, do this, do that, and then you're just having a list of qualifications, but sometimes zero experience. Yes, that is also true. But I've also had people who have uh, qualifications in finance, but their passion is in marketing. Right. So they come and join the marketing team. Wow. Okay, brilliant. So, uh, Malik, you have asked another question regarding the difference between sales and marketing. We'll get to that in just a minute, but it's already 9.30. So let's take a quick break and continue our conversation with Ramzina in a few minutes. Okay, continuing our chat with Ramzina Morset Lai, who is the uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Hutch Telecommunications Lanka Private Limited. Now, Malik said, what's the difference between sales and marketing? There, there is a they are similar, but at the same time, there is a difference also. So, in your opinion, uh, Ramzina, what do you think is the difference between sales and marketing? Yeah, so there is a difference, and it also, I think, there would be probably a slight difference based on the industry or the category. For example, if you are B two B, if you are selling one organization to another organization, then B two B is business to business, business to business. Yeah. So then your sales job, would, uh, sales would be directly talking to the end consumer or you know the organization who is also paying. Whereas uh, if you are in a FMCG or a more consumer B2C organization, sales would be more like the distribution arm. So you are selling not really to the end consumer, you are selling to the different the different points in the in the distribution channel, mm. distribution value chain. Like for example, there will be dealers, there will be retailers, so those, you know, so the sales would be basically making sure that the, you know, the retail is stocked. Mm. Whereas marketing is more more about um, understanding the consumer and then developing products and services and putting together strategies and and uh, improving brand presence to make sure that the consumer's uh, expectations and pain points are uh, solved. So that's that's uh, the difference between the two. All right, and uh, let's see let's say hi to Priyanka who says good morning to the both of you. Have a nice morning. Just to uh, just share your idea if uh, ex. A well-experienced person who has done a lot of technical stuff for a long time in manufacturing, will it fit your organization, or will he be will he will be fixed or, or, or for operations uh, in your company? Okay, so basically, I think what he, I think he's asking is if an experienced person who has done a lot of technical uh, stuff in the manufacturing field, uh, will it be a fit to your organization or? It will be a more operations uh, uh, side. Mm, I would think, uh, see, somebody who has been in uh, in manufacturing, so there would be no direct correlations to our organization because we don't really manufacture anything. What mm. we sell is a network. So once a network tower is set up and the the equipment is fixed, um, what we really sell is a net, network airtime, right? So mm. there is no manufacturing as such. So that, that manufacturing experience, years of experience, would probably not be of much use to an organization like ours. But on the other hand, if this person has um, other skills, like administrative skills, leadership skills, you know, um, and um, certain uh, more other people management skills, then certainly there is, there is, I mean, lot, there are a lot of skills with people that are transferable in, from industry to industry and from field to field. You mm. know, there are no restrictions that say, you know, manufacturing people have to continue in that field. Mm. There are many people who have broken, you know, changed careers, even in late in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, it doesn't make, there is no yeah. problem in that. 
True. And uh, now we'll talk about Ramzina a little bit. Now you spoke about your team and, and the organization, etc. I'm sure this journey to be chief marketing officer has not been an easy one. Uh, even though you're a people's person, I'm sure there have been challenges you faced of you know ups and downs, etc. Um, what are some of the challenges or hardships you probably faced along your journey so I in think, your professional journey? Yeah, so I think it's not. I mean, the hardships is not specifically hardships for me. I think it's challenges that many women in the corporate world mm. you know face. Uh, so. One thing is gender stereotyping. So you know the boardrooms in Sri Lanka or in many other countries across the world is dominated by by males. Right? So these males think that uh, females are irrational, that we are not natural business decision makers. Mm. You know that we are not really therefore not really fit for certain um, high caliber jobs. So it's very difficult sometimes for women to get to get to certain position. You need to work extra hard just to prove yourself that you're on par with your male counterpart. Mm. So <clears throat> if you have a boss who, who sees beyond your gender, then I think you're lucky. But it's unfortunate that luck really has to play a part in this. But that's how it is. It's unfortunate. It's, it's like that. Uh, but I th also, I think if, you, if a woman doesn't have a good support structure at home, it's almost impossible to make it to the top because you know you have the responsibility of the kids you also have responsibility of looking after parents mm. uh, so i mean that's that's traditional sri lankan uh, or asian way right so you yeah. can't actually give up those roles also you need to find that balance so if you don't have a good support structure also at home i think many women will struggle so i have in that sense i have been fortunate yeah um also so your husband and your family very supportive yes of course so i'm married to prince lai prince if you're listening hi i love you <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he works for columbia of cats okay. he's one of those people who has stayed in one company for a long year i think he's yeah. been very loyal years. yes very loyal <laughs> whereas i get a little bored easily yeah. so i moved on to several jobs um so also i think women on the other hand we are also our biggest enemy you know one thing is we pit women against each other instead of being supportive to each other and mm. you know, adjusting our crowns as you say uh, we kind of you know gossip about other women or you know we try to compete with other women which i don't think should be the way and also i think women we we are natural givers right so we are kind of uh, we are very reluctant or we are very shy to accept to ask Hmm. or take what is given to us like for example promotion we are afraid to ask for promotion we are afraid to ask for pay rise hmm. um, we are um, shy to shy for recognition if you know somebody says you know you should apply for this award you know we are shy we say you know i don't think i should be award applying myself or nominating myself i'm waiting for someone else to do it yeah men men don't i think men don't think like that Mm. So those are the, the obstacles I think women face, and I've also faced. I've been overlooked for promotions in my in, in, in my past. Uh, so did you have a great mentor? Yes, I, I again I have been very lucky. I have had bosses. I worked with several female bosses who you know I really gelled very well with them. Uh, so I want to you know maybe if I want to mention a few, there Please. is uh, Yolanti, there is Mrs. Kilisha Dean who was the CEO and the managing director, then then Keshini who was my general manager at, um, at Haley's. So these have been, and, and uh, Roshani Morales, who was at Pizza Hut when I joined. I mean, these have been real superb uh, bosses I've had, I've worked with, female bosses, who really encouraged me, who uh, not really, you know, uh, there, there could be, you know, when we work, women, women, when we work, there could be certain jealousies, mm -hmm. trivial matters coming up, you know, all those things were not present with these ladies when I worked. So I tried to follow a similar, similar kind of leadership style when I work with other people also. So it's, I think also I've been very lucky that I've had superiors who really pushed me, who made, let me make uh, mistakes in the early days in my career so that through those mistakes you can learn a lot. I also must say a huge thanks to my current boss, Thiru, who is the CEO at Hud. So as, when I joined Hud, I had no knowledge about teleco telecom. Yeah. I'm not a technical person, but he put me in the deep end from day one. Yeah. But he was also always there to give me a helping hand if I needed it. Okay. So that's that's how it has been. Well, challenges are there, but if you have the right mentors, hopefully you'll be a part of a great journey. So, oh my goodness, time is flying. It's already 9.48. Gotta take a quick break. Uh, let's continue our chat with Ramzina in the final few minutes. Uh, good morning. This time, I know it's for real. Well, final few minutes uh, on The Breakfast Club with Jay on EFM's Mega Weekends. And um, we have a couple of questions and in conversation with uh, Ramzina Mohsuk Lai. 
uh, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of uh, Hutch, uh, Hutchison Telecommunications Lanka Private Limited. So we have a question from Abu Dhabi, that's Aaron Ramzina. Aaron is asking, hi Jay and Ramzina, could I ask a small question? What do you do to push yourself out of your comfort zone? <laughs> Valid question, I think. Nice question. Uh, I think first, important, it is important to make sure you don't get into the comfort zone. Especially when you are in sales and marketing, there is no room to get into comfort zone because there is something new happening every day. Mm. And especially in telecom, I've been in other industries, but tel telco is crazy. It's crazy things happening out there. It's very, very competitive, hyper competitive. So you can't take a wink at all. Yeah. If you sleep one day, you lost three months of work. Yeah. So, you, first, it's important that you don't get into your comfort zone. But I think if you get, if you feel you are in the comfort zone, then you need to ask yourself some questions. Why are you here? Mm. Why have you not been given more um, uh, more responsibilities? Is your boss not thinking that you are capable of it, or are you feeling, you know? Okay, I'm just happy doing this, happy making this kind of money, so I don't want to, you know. So comfort zone, some people are just happy in the comfort zone, I guess that's what you call call it a comfort zone. But I think it's a question that you need to ask yourself first. So it's a mental game where yes. you need to push yourself out of it. Yes, absolutely. I, I think that's how it is because nobody else actually can do it for you. Yeah. I mean, as a boss, I can see if people are in comfort zone, I try to push them and, you know, talk to them and see if there are more responsibilities I can assign so that, you know, they, there is more. Mm. We can get more out of that person, and that person also feels that he's contributing more. Uh, but you can't force yeah, them. You can't force them. Yes. Yeah. There are people, you know. Yeah. Just there. So, comfort zone is something you need to push yourself out of, according to Ramzina. Subhashini says, Good morning. It's a nice, pumped up conversation. Enjoyed listening to this. Good luck, Ramzina, and good job, Jay. Thank you so much. I look forward to listening to this show every Saturday. Oh, thank you so much, Subhashini. Thank you so much. Manuja is also a big fan of The Breakfast Club. Thank you, Manuja, for your message. He says, Hi, Jay. Good morning. Good morning, Ramzina, as well. I listened to your conversation while driving. You were mentioning about the younger generation and how they respond to work culture. Uh, uh, to a greater extent, I agree with you. But uh, don't you feel that unlike our days, we always need to tell the new generation what to do? Uh, they just stick to their specific job role only. Our days, we think and uh, do a little bit, and we were a little bit more proactive. Any comments on that, please? Uh, okay. Uh, is it uh, different from person person or yes. do you feel like it's a general thing? No, I don't think it's a general thing. I think it's probably different from person to person or also probably different from industry to industry or from organization to organization. It really, it's very Let's talk about your uh, your depends. your young team that you have. Yeah, so it depends very much on the organizational culture. Right? So in our organization, we very much encourage multitasking. So we look for multi-skills when we employ people. Uh, because multitasking is a key. But I know that there are some other operators that 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 uh, operates their business like a factory. So mm. I would say, sew the collar, and you will you will sew the pocket. So you only know how to sew a collar, and I only know how to sew the pocket or mm. the other way, right? So in our organization, it's not like that. We make sure that people, if I am absent today, that there is someone who can take my job and run it for the day. So you know. Um, so that multitasking makes people. So, do you feel like in your in your team, the you might have some young youngsters there? Uh, they are being very proactive and Just thinking on some, their own. Some people need a little extra supervision and extra direction. There are some people, you know, they can watch and learn. So mm. there are there are people with different sets of intelligence and capacities, mental capacities. So I don't think it's really you can really generalize and say that uh, the new generation needs to be told, but of course they have to be taught and they have to you have to handhold them. Give them some sort of direction. Some sort of direction that yeah. needs to be done. Uh, but I must say that you know new generation I feel is not as committed or not as driven as we were mm. because we come from really hard backgrounds. You know when we were young there was nothing right. We mm. really ate what mother cooked and put on the table. Yeah. And Played with paper dolls. So <laughs> nowadays it's not like there is so that much that. going on. There's a lot more technology. Yeah. There's yeah. so many things yeah. happening. There's people are more affluent. Yeah. So um, you know that uh, that hard drive is missing in the new generation is something that I feel is there. Okay, right. Maybe that drive is missing. Yes. Like you okay. said. Maybe that's the thing that they're missing, Manuja. But thank you so much for your message. Uh, Shamila, uh, Shamila says, Hi Jay, this is Shamila. Uh, lovely conversation. Love the show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Shamila. Uh, great to have you on the show. Well, 
Well, final minute. I will in this final minute. I will ask you this, Ramzila. What is your number one advice for the youngsters and adults who are listening in when it comes to they are probably trying to uh, you know join a company or grow in their respective company or plan to do their own thing? What is your number one advice? Um, be prepared for a lot of hard work, uh, and you will get a lot of challenges thrown in your way. They accept all of that that as an opportunity. Mm. So that is number one, and also be prepared for rejection. If you give ten ideas, eight may get rejected, mm-hmm. but don't get. Don't be uh, discouraged. Discouraged. Yeah. Keep expressing your thoughts and your ideas. All right, brilliant, uh, beautiful. I loved every minute of having a chat with Ramzina. She's been great. Thank you so much, Ramzina, for joining us and having a chat with us. Hope you had a great time. Thanks, Jay. I had a really great time, and I really um, want to appreciate the listeners and yeah. those who have sent questions also. Thank you so much to our lovely listeners. Thanks so much. Thank you. To, a big thank you to Ramzina as well. Well, it's our time to step out of the studio and give room to uh, Rick Dees, who's going to play some awesome '90s tracks for you. With that, uh, Ramzina and I are stepping out of the studio. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I will catch you on Monday with Dilsha on the Rush. With that, Jay out of here. Take care. The Breakfast Club every Saturday from nine to ten a.m.